to another episode of Talk with Renee Dallow. It's me, Renee Dallow, and I'm jet lagged today, y'all. Uh, I am here with the lovely Alex Hirsch and Kat Brown, and we are talking about event activation experiences at events. And I can't think of two better people to be joining me for this conversation. How the hell are you both? Don't lie, Kat. I'm hanging on by a thread. <laughs> Kat, how many did you get last night? Just the one. Uh, oh, so one. we're going to try to fix that tonight. Just the one. Right. We are. Um, Alex, have you slept? Are you well rested? Usually I say yes, but last night I don't know why I did not really sleep well. But I definitely got more than an hour, I will say that. But I'm like an eight to ten hour girly um, for sure. Um, total opposite of that. Um, <laughs> so I'm not well rested, but I'm I'm enough. Great. This episode is being brought to you by caffeine and um, entrepreneurial <laughs> is what this episode is being brought to you by. Uh, I was in Nashville for the weekend doing um, what I call coach camp, which is just like life coaching, uh, continuing education. And the entire weekend we talked about body image stuff. <laughs> so just like really light, mm -hmm. no big deal. And then I yeah. took a really late, yeah. just like, totally, yeah, totally affirming, not at all traumatic. Um, conversations. And then I took a flight home from Nashville, which was delayed. So I actually got into LA at 1am. But I did get several hours of sleep. But anyway, listen, we're coming to you as entrepreneurs in the midst of it. And we're just gonna do the things. Yeah. Absolutely. We love it. We're here for it. Okay, so when I have a new topic on the show, which this is a new topic for the show, um, I like to go like really like bare bones in case there's someone listening who was like, what the hell is an event activation? Like, what is it? So um, I'm going to ask you, Alex, describe what event activation is. Yeah, absolutely. So event activations are basically something that it's really activates, like activates your guests, something that's happening at an event, something that creates engagement and engagement, something that is like a performance, something that's really uh, making people at your event go like, oh, what's that? Like, oh, there's something happening. It could be someone like, who's providing a service like us, or it could be something where uh, I was at a recent event where someone was doing like DIY paint your own tiles, like that's an activation. So there's just basically the things you can do at an event um, that keep people entertained would be kind of what, how I would phrase it. Yeah, 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 I think yeah. it's taking a guest from someone that's just like there and passively experiencing whatever is happening to actively engaged with something going on within the event. Love it. And I would say usually they're somehow personalized, like either, like you said, like they're painting on a tile or you're engaging it in a way that like is personal to the individual. Yes. Perfect. If it's done right. <laughs> If it's, if it's done correctly. So what are some examples of some experiential like favors that you guys have been involved in? Yeah, Kat, I'll let you take that and then I'll add on. Yeah, so I think it just depends on the type of event. I think that is what is so great about what we do is really we can take any item, we say any item isn't safe and really customize it and elevate it to a new level. So um, I think what is probably most popular for us um, is glassware. So people bringing in like coupe glasses or wine glasses, things like that. So I'd say that's probably the most common that we've seen, but we have gotten all kinds of things that could span from like paper fans. Um, I've done cufflinks and bracelets. Um, I think Alex, you've done like denim jeans for different things like that, like painted them. So, I mean, it really could go <laughs> all over the map. <laughs> I love that when I'm in an event and there's something to be personalized, I get very excited because it's very unusual to find Renee on anything that is like mass produced, like, you know, like keychains or like, you know, you're in Vegas and you see these giant displays of names. Is there ever a Renee? No, there is not. Yeah. And if there is, it's spelled like who spells it like that. So yeah. every time I see you guys at an event doing something, I'm like, can I get my name on something? Because in my heart, I'm a five-year-old, but I also think that most people just love their name. Like what's that, what's that like saying? Like the sound of your own like name is like the sweetest sound or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Like that you guys jet like, um, so like, I, I just think like, it's such a, it's such a good moment to like come to an event and see that like, oh my God, we're painting on jeans or we're doing like etching on the glass. Um, what, I'm sorry, I d did not mean to cut you off, Alex. What were some examples that you were going to say? <laughs> no, I was 
to say like yeah there's painting on like literally anything like I recently painted on maracas for like a Cinco de Mayo event um Kat and I recently went to Mexico to engrave on tequila bottles for like a wedding party for a wedding the options are kind of endless for what we can personalize and like Kat was kind of saying it's it's taking your guests from just being at an event to being engaged in the event so like another term is brand activations. We've worked with a lot of brands and it's really like activating people to get excited about that brand and whatever they're off through, whatever they're offering as the, I hate to keep saying activation, but <laughs> through the activation. Um, I mean, that's, yeah. we have to use the sentence, you know, what do you see as the people behind the yeah. table <laughs> come up? Like, what are some of their, I don't know, like, what are they saying to you about it? The guests? Yeah, great question. Um, usually they're like, I've never seen this or like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, can I get one? Ooh, like, what is this? Um, it's usually the what we get the most, I would say. So it's really just people like curious about what we're doing, what we're offering. Um, and then we get to tell them like, we are giving away this thing for you. And it is a gift from either like a couple, if it's, um, someone getting married, brand, if it's the brand that's producing the event or just something that's like a client uh, appreciation gift, something like that. Um, so there's just, people get so excited because it's free stuff. And like you said before, people get their name on it or whatever sort of like message they want to get. Yeah. yeah. Kat, what has been your best like interaction with a guest? My favorite interaction is actually about the customization piece, because I know we've been talking a lot about names, but truly, I think the other part of it is we're freehanding everything. So it does not have to be a name. So my favorite interactions are always the people that are like, can I really get anything? And I'm like, oh. yes, like we can do anything. And it's always someone that kind of has that like glimmer in their eye where I'm like, <laughs> Let's get a little cheeky, right? Like, as long as it aligns with the brand, obviously, that's maybe not what we're going to do for like one of our heritage luxury brands. But if it is, you know, like an influencer event or something like that, it's always someone that wants to get a little cheeky. And I'm like, yes, let's do it. <laughs> get really creative <laughs> with it. So that's always the fun part for me is talking them through like, I can do anything. Let me start hearing your ideas. Like I'm going to spitball off of that with you because that really gets them even more engaged and more excited about it too. Um, a lot of people I think that don't fully understand what we do or just like people don't want something else with their name on it. I'm like, that's where you're wrong. First of all, yes, they do. <laughs> But second of all, it does not have to be their name. You know, I think that's a limiting belief. And as soon as we can like unpack that for people, which happens really quickly, um, everyone gets twice as excited to just talk about how creative they can be. So that's always the most fun for me. I love that. Yeah. Alex. I was going to say, like, I've done flowers at a lot of events where people will just be like, can you do this flower? Um, and that was something I did with like a wine and the uh, wine label was like wildflowers and stuff. So I was offering like you could have one of these three different flowers. But people were like, oh, well, if you can do these three, like what other flowers can you do? Um, and so there's just like other things where people will like show us their tattoo and they're like, can you kind of replicate this? And we're like, yeah, absolutely. Like we want to make it so it's engaging and something that the person actually wants to have and not like you were saying earlier and like something someone just wants to throw away or they're interested in because like yeah how many more pens can we have how many more keychains can we have tote bags you know yes well, <laughs> so I too i think like as an event producer and a planner like at the end of the night when it is a generic favor like they get left but when mm -hmm. it is in any way no one there's nothing left like no one's gonna leave a, even if it is a tote bag right with their child's name on it or their or their right. favorite or, or their business name, like no one's going to leave that behind. And so I think like, it's such an interesting way because I really don't advocate for favors for my wedding clients. I think it's a huge waste of money when they are generic. Yeah. Something so like, you know, when it doesn't mean anything to the couple or it doesn't mean anything, yeah. to but when there's something personalized and especially when you're there having that interaction and giving people something they really want, that's a whole different level. And especially for brands, I think it's the smartest thing they could ever do because you'll save that wine bottle. You'll inter interact with that brand forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If and I think, personal. yeah, I think I tell people all the time, I'm like, wedding favors aren't dead. It's really just your approach to it, it really needs to be revived. And as something as simple as a tote bag where everyone's like, yeah, like it's whatever. Like, 
it's just because our perspective on it is wrong. Like as much as we love our wedding logo, like nobody else needs to be taking your wedding logo with your wedding date to the farmer's market. <laughs> like that's just not what people are looking for. So if you take that same exact item, flip script and make it about them, now it really reflects your relationship with them. You're thinking about them even on your day, which is like the whole point of a wedding favor, right? So yeah. it's connecting you with them, even though you might only get like 30 seconds with them. And now again, they have that item that they're not going to leave behind on that table. And they're going to be so excited to share moving forward. So I think it's really just reframing expectations around it. I agree. And I also, I'm curious to know, because I, I always love to put myself in the, in the brain of like the listener, right? So a lot of our listeners are event producers. Yeah. And so like, if they're listening and they're like, really, I want to do this. I want to pitch this to my client, but like, how does, how does one work with the both of you? Like, do, do people come in with fully formed ideas or are they just like, we need something, help us? I encourage them when they come to me to actually not come fully formed the same way that you may have like a loose concept and come to a florist, for example, or you may have kind of a style, you know, your pitch deck already that you're reaching out to other vendors. We are that expert for you, right? So, I mean, if you have something you're already gung ho, that's great. We can help you figure out how to execute it. But if I can catch you early enough um, in that planning process where I can say like, hey, I'm that expert. I know how to make this work for your guests. And I can come up with five to 10 ideas that I think your couple is going to be excited about that fits the theme or matches them and something about them. I think that's on us, right? To help with that interaction because you guys don't know what you don't know. And that should be on us to help serve you. So then you can help serve your couple in that way. Um, so that is my preference whenever that is possible. But I mean, we can also just figure out if there is a fully formed idea already. <laughs> Alex, what do you feel about that? Oh, 100%. Like Kat and I are both very similar in our mindset about that. We're like, we're here to educate the client just like any other vendor. Um, we don't expect you to know exactly what we do or how we do it. Like that's like she said, like that's our job. Um, so I love coming up with ideas. Like I'm like, let's get creative because, you know, I, I mean, for anyone who is new to this, they're like, wow, I'm doing glassware. That's amazing. But for us, we've engraved glassware at so many different events that I would love to, you know, like foil on a yoga mat or a some sort of thing that like people don't really see that could like lend itself to an event. Um, and I met that's not has hopefully not yoga mat at a wedding or maybe hopefully yes yoga mat. So I don't know. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Just, it could be for like the brand luncheon or something. You could do it for that. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, let's talk a little bit about logistics of having you at an event live. Cause I think that might be a hurdle in some producers minds about like, Oh, like what's it going to take or what's the liability there? Or like, in, I know in my mind before I ever had an activation at one of my events, I was like, Oh, it's going to upset the flow. It doesn't PS dear reader. It does not. But talk to me about what you need to know on your end logistically. Yeah. So I think the main thing that we would want to know ahead of time is how many guests you're having, because that's going to definitely dictate maybe how many of us there are, because we're quick, <laughs> I will say. Um, but, it, you know, 300 people, we still definitely need a certain amount of time. And you only have so much time for certain events. You can't always just extend that out. Right. So that helps us decide if we need to bring on any additional people to help support. So I would say, that would be the first thing. Um, and then on top of that, I think identifying what that surface is going to be. A lot of our surfaces are still quick. Um, and I would give that time frame as in like minutes at max, but mm -hmm. it could be seconds depending on, you know, what kind of service we're offering, if it's foiling versus engraving, right? Um, and then what surface is compatible with that. So that will kind of help dictate our workflow. So I think those are the two main things for me. Alex, is there anything else that you can immediately think of? It's so funny because we did, we, Kat and I also have a podcast and we just did an episode on this. Like, dang, like I, re I wish I remember like the, all the points we made <laughs> and just summarize it real quick. Um, yeah. So basically, yeah, the number of like that you're going to have, what you're going to as well as like the amount of time that you have so like if you only have an hour because you want to only be doing it during cocktail hour great we'll get like three four of us and depending on to, for us to fit into your event flow right like we're not trying to come in and 
like you said, like fuck with event flow and be like, oh yeah, like please prioritize us. Um, and like another way that it's done outside of like private events or corporate events or brand events, if we're talking about weddings, um, a lot of times we've been invited for a welcome party. So for yeah. instance, if you were not wanting to do something at your reception because you really want that to just be dedicated to the dancing, to our to be amazing for whatever you're doing there. Um, you know, we've also gone to plenty of wedding welcome parties where a select amount of the night before that's where we were engraving tequila bottles in mexico because they had like a smaller amount of people for the welcome party so that was something that they could kind of fit into their budget as well um and it made sense so there's lots of ways to work i think with what makes sense for your event yeah i love that okay so speaking of your podcast tell me everything when did you start how many episodes you have where can we find it what's it about Kat, go ahead. <laughs> I was like, that would be great if I knew. Um, we <laughs> launched it. <laughs> I was like, end of beginning of this year, end of last year, I think. Right. October twenty. I, I probably should know. Right. Yeah, it's October twenty three. We launched it. We've done like one to two episodes a month. Right. Um, there are definitely times where we had busy sin. Uh, so both of us just like literally not record. Um, plus all the other factors of life. Um, so yeah. we have 10 of those. We just hit our 10th episode. So it's a little baby podcast. Um, no. um, but yeah, we basically right now we have, uh, so people that are doing engraving, doing foiling painting, um, people that are doing live wedding painting, for instance, um, every artist, so many different activations you can have at your event, different artists that you could have at your event as well. Because as much as we would love to do every single form of art, sometimes it's not always possible. <laughs> um, so we've really just been educating, wanting to share what we learned over the years, um, doing all of these events. Like Kat and I have done hundreds of events doing the, this personalization on site. And we want to share what we know because we were kind of seeing like a gap in, you know, the artist community. Um, and we were, we should... We should share what we know, share our knowledge. Um, and it's been really great to see how impactful it's been. People being like, wow, like I never would have thought of this. I never would have thought of that. Like, thank you so much for sharing. Like, I feel so supported. Um, and then I think towards next season, we're going to start having some more guests on our show. Um, so hopefully that means you um, to kind of talk about some of the other things that we can do at events. For instance, like we have one where we want to talk about hiring an agency versus just going directly to the artist, things like that, where it's targeted towards event producers and people that are vendors um, to kind of broaden audience. But also I think it's helpful for everyone. As you know, like I've listened to your podcast so much, Renee, and even if it doesn't like directly apply to me, I've learned so much. It's like little tidbits here and there, or like you get something that's affirmed. So I just think that's kind of the direction we're going as well. Just uh because i think it's just important that we're all kind of supporting each other 100 and make sure that our clients are getting the best experience they can and guests at events are getting the best experience that they can and that doesn't happen unless all of us event vendors are working together so that is true and i also think too like the wedding industry every industry but weddings are specifically like always evolving and there's always something new and i think it feels sort of overwhelming i think for a newer vendor to step into the marketplace and be like, what do I don't what like, I don't even know what I don't know. And it's like, something like event activation, when I started a million years ago. Yeah, we saw it every so often, but it wasn't like a question I asked every client. Now I ask every client during the consult, and this is every wedding planner listening, listen to me, ask them during the consult, what sort of guest experiences do you want? And then when they say, what do you mean? You say live painter, activation, engraving, like you give them, you pepper the ideas in at the beginning. And if they shut you down, if they're like not interested, then at least you know. But if they're like, oh, I didn't even know what was possible, then you know that that's an avenue that one, you have to budget for, and two, you have to educate them on a bit. And then three, you get to use your creative brain to be like, hey, we are in Mexico. Why don't we do tequila bottles, right? Yeah, and totally. So exactly. come home. Yes. Also a way to get them home in bubble wrap, just FYI. Um, that's the first thing I thought of when you said that was, I hope they got bubble wrapped sleeves to go with it. Um, and the podcast, I don't think you said the name, it's called Keeping Up with the Calligraphers, which is like Kardashian. Yes. It's like yes. supposed to, yeah, Kardashians. Okay, just checking. Just yeah, checking. Yes. My next self. We, we love a good right? play on words. 
<laughs> yeah. That was, that was, yeah, I love a good play on words. My business ends of our lives, like times mm -hmm. of our lives or whatever. Uh, so I love a good play on words. Keeping up um, with the calligraphy. You're keeping up with us. We're evolving. Um, doing I things. I don't know. I want to ask you about something that is not in the notes, but I'm, I, I've always been like, so I, I, I follow you on Instagram and I see that like you do all the signs for sweet green, right? Is it sweet green or tender green? No, it's sweet green. Sweet green. Thank you for remembering. How many, like I go to sweet green constantly, like how many signs is that? And how long does it take you? Cause when I look at it and I think Alex did that, I'm always just like, in, does it take you like a month? Like it, I would take me, I mean, it's not my job, but I literally look and like, this must be hours of your life. Sorry. I just like, I'm amazed. Yeah. So no, I appreciate that so much. Like, thank you. Um, yeah, I actually just got, I call it like my sweet green because there are 30 locations between San Diego, Orange County and LA. Um, and all from Westlake Village in LA to Rancho Manga, all the way yeah. from yeah, like everywhere. There's so many locations because I live in San Diego. Um, I get them all done within like six days. It's really the same. Like we've gotten a process down. We've done it so many times, and we just get efficient, right? So the things we're doing, we're not like oh, no, 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 like taking our time doing stuff like we want to get stuff done we want to get it done well we want things to look beautiful and there's a way to do that without like losing the beauty of it and kind of what I do with the signs is just like I've gotten it down to a science it takes like an hour per board wow um most of the time is just driving around LA <laughs> which sucks yeah <laughs> We're going to talk about that when we talk about self-care. Kat, um, I have a question. What is your most, or or maybe Alex, whoever has the, whoever has the story. Do you have like a more, like a most outrageous, like guest interaction that you've had at an event? Which one? Kat always oh, gets, Kat always gets like the most out-of-pocket things. Like the out of, like, people just being like, oh my God, what was it? Like pussy power? That one. That yeah, I, I love nothing more than like a cheeky thing. Yeah. And so sometimes people are like come up and they're like, can you put I fucking love you? And I'm like, sure. But like, there are definitely other times where like someone will be like, like you said, like, oh, can you engrave my perfume to say pussy power? And I'm like, I guess. Or like, people will be like, can you draw a penis? I'm like, not well, but if that's what you want, like, sure. Right? Like, it's not something I typically practice, like my calligraphy, but as long as you're fine with that. Um, but yeah, I actually, probably my most outrageous interactions, it was actually with Demi Lovato. And she sat there for a good, like, two, three minutes. She was like, well, I don't want something like these basic bitches. And I was like, okay, well, like, what are we doing? And so it was on a perfume. And she ended up doing Smell Me Daddy on it. And then it got picked up by like all this media. And I was like, of course, this is the one that gets picked up. Like, of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah, I love a good unhinged moment. I also feel like when guests feel safe to be unhinged with us, it just yeah. means that we have a very non judgmental spirit. And so I appreciate that. Yeah. And again, there's definitely like certain brands that I'm like, I got to shut that down with like tact and whatever else, right? I got to help preserve it. But there are definitely, you know, you get that vibe and that's something that as we're getting to know them, we'll say like, okay, like how comfortable are you? You know, where's the line that you want us to shut it down, right? So it does, we have a clear line of what that boundary is for our clients. Because again, we want to represent them well, that we're there on behalf of them interacting with their guests. So we do want to protect the integrity of their event in that way, um, whether that is a fun vibe or if it's a little more of a classy vibe. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely know like over the years, I've had some clients who would absolutely be like, no, no one's writing that. And then others that yeah. would be like, you're worst, have at it, yeah. you know? Yep. I mean, it runs the spectrum and I, I, I'm i glad that you guys, I mean, of course you do, but it's glad to know that like for people listening, like you can set those parameters and it's not just like the guests can run wild. Almost similarly to like what DJs ask about, like, can we play clean versions or dirty versions? It's like yeah. everyone gets, yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's time to ask about your self-care. I'm going to start with Kat since she only got an hour of sleep last <laughs> night. Uh, so I ask all my guests now. So self-care has been like my thing for the last, since pre-pandemic, when I realized during the pandemic that like the entire way I was running my life was just like insanity. And I was literally just existing to work. And then the pandemic hit and I had no choice but to like confront myself and be like, oh, I probably should figure this out. 
so that led to a very long exploration of like my own self-care and like what habits I really need in my life to feel like solid and secure and also like able to work at my best, right? And able to like live at my best. So I always ask my guest and I'll ask you, and maybe I'll phrase it slightly differently. Are there any habits that you have that you really love right now? Or are there any habits that, you tr that you're trying to build for your own self-care? Yeah, my self-care is trash. Um, we can just start with that. <laughs> Um, I, I don't, I'm not doing it right. I'm not doing the self thing, like self care thing. Right. I, it just ends up being another task on my list. If we're being honest, mm -hmm. like, it's like, oh, I gotta, I gotta work out because it does make me feel better, but I, it is not something that I'm like, I got to step into it. It's literally just another thing on my plate. So I don't think I'm doing it right. <laughs> or, um, I, mean, I haven't really figured out maybe like the exact right thing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, you know, exercise is important to me, um, just as like a former collegiate athlete. So I would say like that definitely fills my cup a little bit so I can continue to give more. My self-care yeah. is trash. That's, that's all I got. I don't, I got nothing. And you, what you said is like 100% accurate. E everyone feels that way. And like, kudos to you for just like saying it. I will say this, like a current encouragement for you. Like if you really are like, I don't have any fucking habits, like where do I start? You start with water. Like get yourself one of these big ass water bottles and drink at least one of them a day. Fantastic. I got it. <laughs> like water is essential. Like that's the thing too. Like pre-pandemic or like even uh like end of pandemic, I was drinking iced tea. Like it was water. Like that was my job. And I'd be like, why am I so fucked up all the time? Like, why am I vitamin? Why do I have a migraine? <laughs> right. Why do I have a migraine? Why does my skin look bad? And it's like, cause you're drinking iced tea, lady. And it's basic, right? But when I Yeah. And it's also like it builds, right? So like, do you get your water habit yeah. going? And once you get the water, get the sleep. Yeah. And once you get I the would, sleep, you exercise, you know, it's like a ladder. Yeah. I do. There is, um, I was like the one thing that I refuse to give up actually. And I guess it's like my self-care routine that does not feel like a task is I get my lashes done. It makes me feel better. And I love my lash girl. I take the best beauty sleep when I'm there. Like, that's my little lash nap and I'm there and <laughs> that's where I catch up on my sleep. So yeah. I guess that's pretty much the only consistent thing that does not feel like an additional task to me. <laughs> I love that for you though. That is self-care. You're taking care of yourself. You get a little nap, you get a little beauty, you're supporting a small business, another female entrepreneur, like hundred yeah. percent. Love it. So you are doing it. You're doing, we have a, we have a whole bottle and you're doing, and you're doing lashes. You're doing great. <laughs> 10 out of 10. What about you, Alex? Because you said you're an eight to 10 hour girly of sleep. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll say, good. yeah, the past month isn't a great representation of uh, how I usually operate as a business owner or human because um, I have literally gone from project to project to event to project to event to project and it has been uh, wild. It has been wild. Um, but yes, I absolutely get my sleep. Good. That is number one. Um, and I will say number two that I don't know if it's like, it, I consider it self-care, um, but also more just like community, like having my community. Yeah. Um, I don't think of it as like my nails, my lashes, my whatever, because I think honestly at this point we're, we're women. It's again, like we're going to look presentable at events and those are the ways we're going to do those things. Um, so like, are they self-care or are they more of like things we have to do to like kind of maintain like, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think it's just really like relying on my handle of people that support me, um, including Kat, just adding one more thing to her to-do list. Um <laughs> Um, but just really like connecting with people like that brings me so much joy. Um, and I think that's where I don't feel alone. That's where I feel like I can stay motivated is when I have people that are supporting me or when I'm supporting them back. Right. And so um, thankfully, I've had a great partner the past few weeks to deal with my unhinged schedule. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, most of the time, it's really just making sure that I'm surrounded by people who breathe life back into me. If that very important. Because otherwise I mean. as entrepreneurs, we can feel very isolated. You know, even when you do yes. have a part, right? Like even because mm -hmm. I'm you you're coming in from two different places, you're not working side by side. Right. So mm -hmm. very important to keep that connection up. And the other thing I'll say too, because like you mentioned the schedule was like has been back to back. 
did you know that that was happening or did that sort of surprise you as it went on? Um, it was one of those things where it was just like one thing I, I was like, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I could fit that in. Yeah, I could. And then I was like, oh, no, what did I do? You know, like, uh, like an oh, shit. What, ha- what did I do? Why did I do this? Yeah. <laughs> Which happens yeah. often. And, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it happens yeah, we're always like last on the list for most of the things. We're always that thing that's like if we have the budget at the end. So I do think there's a handful of our stuff that gets booked weeks or months out. And that's like phenomenal for us. That feels like you're booking two years out for us. But a lot of the stuff really is like, hey, are you free next week? Like, hey, are you free Thursday? And it's like, bro, it's Monday. <laughs> like <laughs> I would say that's really consistent with brands for sure because yeah. brands are people think that brands have their stuff together. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I don't. I work with very little. I can count probably the amount of brands on my one hand, like that have a seamless process, have their budget together, have a system, have a thing. Like mm-hmm. they are all figuring it out and winging it just as much. Like I would say, weddings, like those clients are actually the ones that like have the planner are prepared like months in advance even sometimes a year in advance like i love that absolutely so yeah it's really it's really those brands coming in (laughs) the shame of it is that they pay well right and so like i have a really good friend who's a florist who does a lot of brand work and you have no idea how many times she's canceled on me for dinner to be like hey kettle one called i have a thing i'm like bye see you later see you next week because i know right because the timing is so wild the reason i asked like Mm -hmm. if you could see it coming versus if you could not is because i really think one of the best things we can all do for self-care is a little bit of like for lack of a better word, like schedule hygiene to really like look at our calendars and be like, what have I committed myself to? Right. And sometimes Mm -hmm. I don't even catch it because on Sundays I do this, like I sit down and I'm like, okay, what am I doing? And last week there was a networking event on a Wednesday night that I committed to happily. Um, And then I had a a. 5am flight to Nashville the next morning. Hmm. Who made the the plans, Renee? Who did that to you? Mm -hmm. I did it. I did it. And I had to ask myself like, do I want to keep this commitment or do I, or like, what am I giving up for this? Right. And I, what I gave up was a little bit of sleep, but it wasn't the end of the world. But like that happens all the time to me and other, everyone, I'm sure there was one year, I think it was last year, my stupid ass booked a Friday wedding. It was a Friday. It was like a random Friday wedding. And this is at my favorite venue in town, which, which I'll work at all the time. But that was September 29th. And then I had an October 1st wedding. And in my mind, they were, comp- they were so far apart because it was oh, two no. different. Yes. It was oh, yeah. mm-hmm. one day apart mm-hmm. by October 2nd. I was like, I'm dead. I'm dead. And my whole team was like, why did you do this? And I was like, I didn't know that I was doing it because I wasn't thinking clearly. Yeah. And that's life sometimes, you know? Yeah. Alex and I, we just had two back-to-back travel weddings that she's never going to let me pick flights for again. <laughs> Uh, when we went, we were literally in Mexico for like 36 hours because we landed so late. Logistically, nobody told me that like the airport was a certain distance away from the hotel, which was not the hotel of the event. And that was another distance away from that in that the event ended at like one. Uh, so then, yeah, we literally ended up from like when we got ready and got on the bus to go to the event, we literally did not sleep until we landed back here. So it was literally mm-hmm. almost 24 hours that we were awake. And then I was like, ooh, sorry, we're actually doing that again next weekend in Texas. Uh, <laughs> so sorry, we're going to end this wedding at 1130. Our flight's at five. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, lessons were not learned for those two. But the third time I will have learned it. <laughs> It's yeah, you. I will be the one looking at the itinerary before you book. <laughs> do this. Listen, the Renee that books the flights is never the same Renee that has to do the flying. And like a few weeks ago, yes. I had to go to Charlotte because my my uh, my co uh, I have this like side business with Amber, this conference confident, and so we were doing a workshop. And I the where it was scheduled, I really only had like the day of the workshop and then a couple of hours and a couple of hours. Like I didn't have three whole days. To be there. Plus, it, I had to go to the other side of the country, so it was like we were doing like the fireside chat the night of, and I was like, I have to go and pack. My flight is in a couple of hours, and you know, I will stand by that decision now because I needed to get back for commitments here. But like, it is a different thing when you're like, who booked these? I who decided yeah. this? 
like which version of who yes. do I think I'm 20? Like, what am I doing? Right. But then ultimately oh, you have to make, <laughs> you have to decide what it's worth to you. What, sorry, Alex, what were yeah. you saying? No, I was just saying, no, literally like I am not. <laughs> oh, 30. Yeah. I you struggle it because I, so I think a lot of people do, maybe not a lot of people, a lot of people in my perception do everything full-time. I am very much part-time. I have a full-time career that I work for the government. I also have twin two-year-olds as of today um, on top of my business. So because it's a government job, I can't like take that calendar and put it on my personal phone. So if I'm not on my work computer, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. That's after work hours. But then I'll look and I'm like, fucking cool cat you're supposed to be in san diego that day so literally what did we just do last thursday i had to be in san diego or i had a dentist appointment at seven and then i had to be in san diego for work and then we had to be in hollywood by seven o'clock so i was like what the fuck am i doing like yeah Yeah. this is so again self-care is trash (laughs) this is also when self-care has to become like more essential than ever even if it's just a couple of things you can grab like here, there and everywhere. So like, yeah, my encouragement for everyone listening, who's just like, yeah, me too. is just like, figure out what you need baseline, like, and just make sure you're getting that baseline. And I know it's going to sound very indulgent, but like for me, one of my baselines is just like brain dumping in my journal for about five minutes a day. Even if I'm writing so fast that it is unreadable who cares i'm not gonna read it again but it's just the act of like getting that junk like out of my head you know especially if we wake up and we already feel overwhelmed by our lives like i need to put pen to paper and be like listen and it's just like renee's list of grievances for the morning and like (laughs) do it then i end up thinking about that shit all day when i'm trying to get from san diego to hollywood and the kids like you know i just i don't have time for all the brain bullshit so i have to get it out and i know i talk about journaling all the time on the show people are like i don't want to journal okay don't do it but you're just brains full of junk and mine's not the Mm -hmm. end (laughs) so take that (laughs) take that okay tell us where we can find keeping up with the calligraphers um yeah so we are on apple spotify whatever other platform you use um, we're on all of them so you can look that up on whatever you use to listen to podcasts um and we have an instagram as well if you want to follow that you post like little surveys if you want to give us feedback if you want to um and it's keeping up with the colleagues so c-a-l-l-i-g-s i'll put it in the show Um, we can just click amazing great yeah and that's how who we are on instagram so we just you can keep up on there too Love it. And how many, you said episodes are out like twice a month, right? Ish. Um, well, ideally. One to two. <laughs> ideally two a month, but right now it's like one a month, maybe okay, taking a look for a bit. You no. Know? Yeah, I think people who don't have podcasts don't understand how, um, how much work it is to have a podcast. And like, I've yeah. been doing it for four years pretty much weekly. And that is a lot. So I, anyone who dives into the podcast world, especially self-produced, uh, I give you tons of kudos because it's a lot, but it's worth it. I think, I think it's worthy work. Yeah, we love it. And we're always spitballing ideas of like, oh, that's a great episode. And we're like, yeah, but like when, like we record at like 11 at night, I edit everything in GarageBand. Like Alex does the transcripts. <laughs> like it is a grassroots effort. <laughs> we don't have anything extra going into it. It's truly just a passion project for us. So, but we do love it. Like we are finding a really fun community we've always had, but it, you know, it's really been really life giving. I love that. I love it. Thank yeah, you guys so much yeah. for being here. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. And then we both have our own Instagrams, like as yeah. artists, we both have our own businesses as well. I'm signs of our lives. So S I G N S O F blah, 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 blah. You're going to put it in the show notes. Perfect. And then I am, I am at Kat Lauren calligraphy on Instagram. And that is Kat. C at Lauren Calligraphy. Cat with a C. Thank you both so much. And uh, for everyone listening, thank you so much for listening. And we will see you next week, same time, same place. Bye for now. Bye.